This holiday season, we all wish for hope and healing. Children and families who spend their holidays at the hospital deserve a reason to believe in first steps, in giggles, high fives, and hugs. For 150 years, Children's National Hospital has provided world-class care and groundbreaking research. Please donate today to help patients and healthcare heroes this holiday season. Visit childrensnational.org slash holiday. That's childrensnational.org slash holiday. With MailChimp, you get a whole lot more than a URL. You get an all-in-one marketing platform to help drive sales. That means you can connect your data to make more informed, smarter decisions. And you get powerful automation tools like our customer journey builder to ensure you never miss an opportunity to turn shoppers into loyal customers. So if you're ready to integrate your marketing and boost sales, get started today at MailChimp.com slash smart marketing. MailChimp, built for growing businesses. That long day behind you, good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping, that'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk. Music, medicine, then some to talk, talk, talk the tavern. The song's over. Here we come. Welcome to the tavern. We'll get to the topic and discussion in just a moment. Just want to let everybody know this is an adult show with adult topics, adult humor, and in other words, uh, we drink, we smoke, we swear, and we laugh at things we probably shouldn't, but we do it together. For those listening to the podcast, we record the podcast on our live stream at twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk and have a live interactive chat audience. You might hear the sound of the bell, and that means I want to interrupt somebody to read a question or comment. For those on the live stream, we won't read off everything you put in chat, but we'll try to get to the most relevant or the most amusing, but hopefully some combination of the both. Now, while we introduce ourselves, go ahead and let us know what your vices are tonight. Okay, we wait for you to put your vices up. Hello, Gary. Hello, Trinity. Hello, all those others hanging out that we don't like. We'll have to call your names out loud. Um, I'm Travis. Tonight, my vices are toasted notes, so we don't forget the toast, a small dingy bell, and a uh, Coke Zero. What about you, Andrea? What are you doing? Well... I don't know if anybody ever had one of these containers in their house, but that contains buttons and a sewing kit, so I'm mending some pants, and I am drinking a beer tonight of the root variety. No, How about you, Ed? It's, it's, wait, 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 a couple of things. You might want to describe one of these things, considering we're recording a podcast. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. You can't see it through the radio? Hmm. So the Danish-style butter cookie... Tin that's blue that you always get around Christmas and if you are of any age you had a mother or a grandmother that kept their sewing kit in it I never had a mother or a grandmother you know that's so whatever I had a mother and the one. beer <laughs> of the root variety is root beer by Boylan Boylan okay. Boylan okay your turn Ed what up people I am drinking um, Seagram's ginger ale since I already drank a whole bottle of wine earlier tonight. A whole yeah. bottle of wine? Yeah, it was a good day. All right. Nice. What kind of wine? Uh, Mayomi Pinot Noir. Very good. So, so, what made you drink a whole bottle of wine this afternoon? I'm on vacation. I'm at the beach. And? and right now, it's raining its ass off. <laughs> see I, i'm trying to feed the line to you in case you don't actually want to say it out loud i'm on vacation with family see it's that with family part that i was digging for because <laughs> being on vacation you have a drink you being on vacation with family you drink you drink you have a bottle. <laughs> that's right it's uh so i mean you're you're out on the seashore right you're on the ocean. Yeah, we're we're on the Outer Banks in North Carolina. How are you enjoying it? Uh, it's it's fun so far. Okay. What kind of stuff you've been doing out there? 
um, eat, sleeping, and drinking. Nice. Have, yeah. you, have you had corn on the cob cooked on a grill yet since you've been out there? No, we probably won't have that this week. We had oh. steaks cooked on the grill today. Nice. Makes me want to just stop the show and go out and start up my grill. Of course, then I'd have to go to a store to get steaks. Well, and we can't have corn yet because it's still growing in the garden. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a busy week. <laughs> it's just excited to see you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Andrea has planted her garden and set up a new area for the garden. I have, I did demo, as in demolishing, on my front porch this past weekend and built, uh, I should say it's a steps and ramp, but built new stairs up to the front porch. So, yeah, it's been a productive weekend. Um, and I think I sunburned my scalp. <laughs> I was yeah. just, like, like both days all weekend I was out in the sun doing things. So, okay, today's topic here on Talk Wait. of the Temp. Oh, see, I waved this damn toasted note all around and totally forgot about it. So let's, let's do a toast. Um... So, hold on, and I've got a good toast, but I'm going to get Cogsley to give us a toast, too. Speaking of Cogsley, I think I'm going to make him a character in my next writing project. Okay, so Cogsley says, Conversation about the weather is the last refuge of the unimaginative. And we already have discussed the weather. Fuck you, Cogsley. Yeah, screw you, bitch. Yeah, I told you you're going to end up fighting with him and kicking him off the show. <laughs> Okay, and I don't have a block s- here. That's right. Um, okay, so now my toast is considering our topic is matter over mind. Here's to mental health, but in the way of not treating the symptom, but seeking to bridge the cause. If that makes any sense? Yeah, sure. I'll drink to that. Here, here. Uh, that's uh, hello, Raven. Good to see you. Thank you for lurking. But um, <clears throat> no, what I mean by that is, so many people with whatever things they're dealing with, whether it's physical problems, mental problems, social problems, they seek to put a bandaid on it, something to just stop it, but not actually fix it. And, and that's where that toast was going. Mm-hmm. Andrea, the topic being matter over mind, you had a concept here. And hey, John, good to see you, buddy. What up, John? Hey, everybody. Okay, so you know you always have heard, I think, therefore I am. Right. Well, recently I heard this, and it kind of resonated with me. I am, therefore I think. Oh. So basically, instead of thinking, this is how I'm going to be, you you have the actions, you do the actions, you do what you want to be, you become what you want to be, you take the steps, which changes your way of thinking, which makes everything fall into place. That makes more sense to me, because you can't just think about it, you need to do it. Right. Place the action along with the thought. Yeah. It's and let the actions change your way of thinking. Yes. Um, th- this so works. with that. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Okay, so with that in mind, I was thinking, wow, have I done this? Yes, I have. So I figured we could discuss how we've done this through life and how we can do this to become who we want to be. So. I don't know if it's the angle of Ed's camera, but he looks confused. Are you confused, Ed? Don't you have to think about it before you can do it? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) But but to 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 clarify, though I know Ed's just fucking with us, in case somebody's like, really, you have to think it through. You have to take action with your thought. You're not going to think yourself to doing it. being fit or getting a new job or 
pre writing a book or dieting, you're not going to think yourself to any of this. You have to match it with action. What were you going to say, Andrew? So, in this book I'm listening to, um, this is you can how it came say out. what book so, it is. It's Riding the Elephant by Craig Ferguson, and he's reading it. So I really enjoy it because it's his words with his words. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Um, so, like for an alcoholic, they can't just think, oh, I'm not going to drink. Right. They need to not drink and keep that keep not drinking to become sober and then it changes their mind so that makes sense and actually when you first brought this up i was thinking of aa and the 12-step program because a lot of times that is putting things into action um you can want things all you want and you could think about it all you want but until you actually start doing you're you're just running in circles and you know not treading water jerking off i don't know so <clears throat> mm -hmm. i think I'm i had something but i thought about it too much and it went right out of my damn head uh, I was... quick catch it it's behind you mm. see this angle of camera makes ed look so much like meaner and tougher than normal <laughs> <laughs> He's just like all buff and mean right now. I see as he giggles. Okay, so go ahead, Andrea. I was gonna say, no, he looks like like earlier you said a kid at the counter waiting for dessert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> waiting for my burgers and fries. Okay. So where in your life have you done something like this, Andrea, where you move okay. forward physically to change a mental state or a, a situation in your life? Okay, so I've done a lot of things, which, you know, travel and learning to play bagpipes and doing this and doing that and all kinds of really neat things. And people are like, oh, I wish I could do that. Mm. I used to be like that. I used to be like that. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I took the steps. And then it just became what it was. And now I'm doing all kinds of things, experiencing new experiences. Because I changed my way of thinking. Instead of, oh, I'd like to do that. It's like, I'm going to do that. And I do it. When it comes to travel, for example, Andrea has been saying want to go to New Orleans for years now. New Orleans. New Orleans. You know, I'm, oh. I'm not going to sit here and debate it because everybody's going to say it a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> just, Tomorrow. just like if we talk about St. Louis. I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, so <clears throat> it, it was only a couple weeks ago we went let's we're driving somewhere and i'm like okay we want to do this let's do it so instead of thinking about it <clears throat> i said pull out the notepad right now because i was driving so i said ask andrea to pull out the notepad and let's start making a list of things to do and within a few minutes we had a list along the lines of hold on i got the list right here i rewrote it um you know, plan the dates. We found a jazz festival in October. Uh, find a cat sitter, then book hotel, airline rental car, etc. But the point is, we we started doing, we started planning, started making it solid. Now we don't necessarily have the money saved up yet, and I know we have certain bills between now and then, um, property taxes and everything. But what it does, when you start putting it into action, it allows you to start building it. So if you're looking at, well, I can't afford that, look at how many times you eat out. Look at how many stupid things you buy from Walmart or Amazon that you don't really need. Yes, I do. <laughs> at that moment, definitely needed it. Um, so what about with you, Ed? Have you ever... 
had something in your life that you want to change that you just thought about and nothing happened to you? Hold on, my cat apparently has her ear going on. Which one was it? Ed, ever made a change in your life? <laughs> hey, just recently. New job. Now, was that and something? I've been thinking about it for a long time, but the opportunity just didn't come around until recently. But, yeah. So that was a matter of waiting till opportunity came around, or did you... Opportunity. So it wasn't something you had any control over then? Not necessarily because I wanted the right amount of money. Might not be the best example for this topic, then. <laughs> yeah, I grabbed a hold of the opportunity as soon as it presented itself. Right, right. It's, uh, yeah. You know, one of the hardest things people do in the matter over mind is leaving a relationship. Yeah, the first one took me a while. Yeah. And, uh... But everyone after that just fucking left to make that. That's what I'm hearing. Um, hey, uh, <laughs> hey, I learned. It's and, and it's true, but so many people, we've all been there or had a friend who's like, oh, I'm just not happy. I'm just not happy. And at first, you're very sympathetic. We're getting sympathy. Mm. Then eventually people are like, you know what? Shit or get off the pot. I'm so... Yeah, I, I'm... Mm -hmm. I'm not sympathetic. I, I do have those friends, and I'm not sympathetic when I hear that. Um, Andrea really hit the nail on the head when she it put everything in perspective about tonight's topic when she said, people, I wish I could so-and-so. Do it. Make the change. Do it. Yeah, definitely makes sense. It well, you can't just sit there and wait, oh, I will... I'm going to win the lottery. Do you buy the tickets? Well, no. Or I'm going to do this. Well, have you taken steps to it? No. Mm -hmm. People don't understand. You're not, you can't, it's not just going to fall in your lap. Sometimes it may happen. That's the luck of the draw, but mostly no, you have to take the steps. Go ahead, Ed. Maybe some people can't figure out the steps. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But if they're busy thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking mm -hmm. about it, then they know... Is it fear? I think a lot of people are locked in their comfort zone. And even though that comfort zone is uncomfortable, it's known. And that's always confused me because... If I'm not happy somewhere, you know, you work to change it, you work to correct it, you work to alter it, and if that doesn't work, no. If this can't be changed so I am happy or at least content where I am, yeah, it's it's time to make a big change. Shake things up and get out of that situation, whatever it is. Well, I've, I've seen people, I've known people that they want to succeed, but yet they're afraid of the success so they fail that's a big problem I think we've been hearing that all our life you know so and so is afraid of succeeding they're holding themselves back and I think a lot of people don't understand that because you look at certain things in your life and you're like why would I be afraid of success I'm not it just hasn't worked out for me yet yeah, yeah. Take chances and, and fail. Um, I remember watching, I don't know how long ago it came out, um, Denzel Washington doing a commencement graduation speech at a, a college. If you're going to fail, fail big. I was like, wow, I wish somebody had told me that 30 years ago. There's one thing in my life, and I just talked to Andrea about this the other night. That if I could go back and convince my younger self, not tell my younger self, because other people told my younger self this same thing. And I've told many younger people this one piece of advice, this one concept to keep in mind. And that's 
take that risk. Now, that risk might be asking that person out. That risk mm -hmm. might be quitting your job and going and looking for another job. It, basically, anything where you're stepping out of your comfort zone, that's a risk. But with any of these, there's always the reason of, oh, um, they might laugh at me or they might, you know, mm -hmm. mock me. But you have to look at if you fail, yeah, you might get laughed at, you might get mocked, you might be pointed at, whatever. But how long does that last, really? Mm. I mean, even if it's, oh, well, I'm in high school or college and they're going to laugh at me for the rest of the year. Probably not. There's one schmuck that won't let it go. But that's not everybody. Most people don't care that much about your damn life anyway. But how long will whatever you're taking that risk on last? Especially if it's something bigger, whether it's a relationship or a job or, again, writing a book, playing an instrument, you know, any kind of creative outlet or traveling. And that's something else I'll say. You can save up and buy all the car stereos and brand new TVs and video games you want. Not a single one will last as long in your life as taking a trip somewhere. It's that trip will have more value in the long run. Going someplace, seeing people, experiencing things. But I'm prone to travel. Sorry, you see, I'm, I'm bobbing my head because you said taking a trip up somewhere, and I just instantly heard war singing low rider. <laughs> Take a little trip. Sorry. Come on, Are you. we conditioned to play it safe? What do you think, Andrea? A lot of people, yeah. Because. You need that stability. You need to have that routine, and that's the American way. I read an article the other day, which was very surprising to me, about Japanese um, architecture. It is not built to last like American stuff, where your home is forever. Over there, no, your home is temporary. And so that you're not stuck in a stagnant thing. It's kind of a cultural thing. Plus, also architects have more design freedom because it doesn't have to be stable and long lasting forever that's why their architecture is so interesting hmm. it, it gets you out of your comfort zone and being stuck in one place and stagnant for so long where you have those roots and you can't go anywhere and I found uh, that's a neat concept I have a question with the rice paper walls and everything, do windstorms fuck those things up? What do you think? I would think yes. And also, winter, <laughs> does it insulate well enough to be like, yeah, I'm okay. Or do they have well, very I, mild winters there? I don't it think they It depends on where you are in Japan. Mm -hmm. Where you say, Andrea? I don't think they put the paper wall houses in places that have a harsh winter. Mm. I think it's according to the climate, they actually do a little bit of research before they build. Like stick their hand outside and go, ah, it feels warm. Get the paper. We're building a house. <laughs> Stop making fucking little uh, swans out of the things. Give me that. That's our wall. See, if, you, if you make it with paper, then you can just roll it up and relocate. So it's all right. <laughs> Sorry, if in the U.S. you say roll it up, <laughs> you're just smoking it. You're not relocating it. Um, I don't know what they do. And Gary says, I was actually wondering about that myself, especially during winter. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, because we just watched Mortal Kombat and they had snow in a paper house. Of course, that's because, you know, Sub-Zero was there. Yeah, that's because he made it winter. Right, that's what I'm saying. I, he didn't make the paper house. His name isn't, well, you know, like know. college ruled instead of sub zero. <clears throat> <laughs> I 
Anyhow. Okay. Anyway. Nickname. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So, depends so, on the climate and where they are in Japan. Gotcha. So, okay. So, you, you did talk about me and how I, I want to go to New Orleans. And I've been wanting to go for a while. And now I'm like, we're going to do it. Here's what we're going to do. And we started planning. So... What is something that either one of you guys, either one of you that would like to have happen that you need to start doing steps towards? Win the lottery. Is there anything? Hmm? Win the lottery. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Well, do you buy the tickets? Yeah, I'm right. Every couple because months. That's the first step. It is. Yeah. <laughs> By the way. Virginia Lottery, Ed, in case you don't know, you have the app on your phone where you can scan tickets and see if they're winners? I actually buy mine on the computer and I get the email letting me know whether or not I get, uh, I won anything. Oh, really? You can do it on the computer now? Yeah. Well, uh, you, you'll be able to do it through... Wait, which tickets do you buy? What do you buy? Powerball and Mega. Okay, that's about all that. Apparently in July you'll be able to do it on your phone app. What, Andrea? Oh, okay. See, I don't get lottery tickets very often, but I like the scratchies because there's a game, there's fun involved, you know, it's not just, oh, let's wait, and then they draw the numbers. I like to play the game. Nice. Ed, just so you know, if you got the app Mm -hmm. on your phone, you could just scratch off that scan bar. You don't have to scratch it and then hit it with your phone. (laughs) Beep! Loser. (laughs) Yeah, I don't do that. Andrew looks well, horrified. I, when I work at the convenience store, I see all these people and they just scratch the little code and, oh, done, oh, done. And there's $50 gone. That's not fun. Right. I'll spend my $2 and I've won a few times. What's the most you've ever won? $500. Well, you, Ed. 20 <laughs> Twenty hundred? <laughs> no, twenty bucks. <laughs> uh, that's the most you've ever really. I've won a thousand dollars. See, I don't play it very often. I buy a ticket or two every four or five months. I feel like going on there and just buying it right now. Huh. I could do it. So, what about all of our people in chat? Is there anything that you would like to do that? You need to do the matter of your mind and start taking that first step. What's your, what is it? What is your goal? And what is your first step? See, and while we're waiting to see if anybody answers, what I'll tell you is, uh, throughout my life, I've done this a lot. I have moved over sixty times, and there's been quite a few times where I've just decided I'm going to do this, and I take that leap. Um, when writing books, it's often that way, where I can sit here in that planning stage so long and then I just have to leap and just start doing it do you want to read Gary's comment there um yeah Gary says I have to soundproof to soundproof the wall on my third floor and it requires I take down all the plaster and And your lab and it's a big project lathe that lathe lathe what is that word? What does that mean? Lathe is uh, the stuff that holds the plaster together. Plaster and lathe. Oh, that's I pronounced know. last. Lathe is also spelled that same way, and it's a wood turning mm-hmm. tool. So you or even right. Well, yeah, basically. that's why I'm like, wait a minute. Gotcha. Then that's how you make a bat, and then spools first. Okay. Right. I I don't know what they make it out of these days, but. Back in the old days, it it it, uh, it was wood strips and the plaster had horse hair in it. Oh, that's a son of a bitch! So, Gary, I'm curious why why do you have to soundproof the third floor? Are you just like getting lucky and everybody else in the house is complaining, or is it the sound of talk of the tavern echoing through the halls? <laughs> if only. Well, I would think that with all that thick plaster. Doesn't that kind of soundproof it a bit anyway? Not with a glory hole there. Oh, we'll just plug that up. That's the point. (laughs) That's how you do it. 
It is my, <laughs> see, it is my bedroom, and the next door neighbors have two young men who play video games with dual monitors, and there's a lot of noise. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so you're not necessarily trying to stop your noise from getting out, but their noise from getting in. Um, why don't you just buy the soundproofing cushion things like I'm doing with my sound booth behind me and just put it all over that wall to absorb sound? <laughs> okay, okay. See, that works both ways. Also have people mm -hmm. over, yeah. I want to make sure nobody hears it. That's right. They get to hear it, then they better be watching the video and paying for it, damn it. That's right. <laughs> And just so everybody knows, Gary's fans only page is. Yet to be created. <laughs> Understandable, Gary. Yeah. It's uh it, it's much more to buffer like the echoing of voices off the walls like when we're recording here, as opposed to stopping loud noises from coming through. But noises are crafty. Sometimes they'll go to the other side of the house and sneak in through the window. Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. Do both those things. That's a good idea. And then earplugs, noise canceling headphones, and two cats strapped to your head. One on each side. <laughs> what? Meow. <laughs> Meow. Sorry. <laughs> Don't hear the video games anymore. Meow. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> ball gag. <laughs> looks, looks like the perfect the evening is. <laughs> okay. They can't gag on balls. Who's wearing the gag? That's just such. They can't gag it's on the ball. I had them removed. What's gone? It's just gone off the rails. No, it's Welcome something to he needs to do, but he's got to. He's got to do it. Imagine it. And think about it. And get it in motion. And <laughs> something. Get the video equipment. <laughs> and the lights. And put put the eye bolt through the joist. Yeah. For the swing. And... <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know what? Some other things that I've done with that, Andrea, is uh, singing. Mm -hmm. Last year I was doing some karaoke on Twitch and streaming it, and it was very, very bad. No, it never got very, very good, but it got okay because once I realized and then acknowledged how bad it was, I decided to do something about it. So it was a matter of taking the steps and practicing it. And I think that's something uh, our friend Aaron says a lot, is it takes a certain amount of time to not only remove a habit, but it's actually quicker and easier to put another habit in the place of what you're removing. So you want to make sure you're replacing the bad habit you're trying to remove, even if that's just inaction, with something else so it fills that void and you're not left kind of hanging and wanting. Yeah, a badder habit. <laughs> did, did you say a bad rabbit? A badder habit. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I just realized Ed has a table full of balls behind him. Mm hmm. Multicolored. Gotta be rough if you're gagged with one of those. Can't be good for the teeth. Mm. Probably not. <laughs> Very good. So one of the one one aspect of this topic is looking at your world, your life, your environment. Is it shaped? Does your mind shape your environment and how you live? Or do your actions shape your experience and how your mind perceives things? Does that make sense? Is that kind of like nurture over nature? No. Nah. It's does reality create 
your perception or does your perception create reality? It, it's that concept flipped a little sideways and on it. It depends on if you take the red pill or the blue pill in the matrix. It, exactly. I think it all depends on... Oh, which which one stops pregnancy? I don't know now. That's why I keep getting messed up on that. <laughs> Just take all the pills. Is one a chewable baby aspirin? No. No. That's it's the pink pill or the orange pill. Okay, what other stuff can we work on with this? Well, mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ed. I, I, I think for many, their, their perception affects reality more so than reality affecting their perception and in some ways that's not a bad thing because mm. yeah <laughs> well I, I can hmm. agree with that Ed. because you said their perception creates their reality uh, I know of some individuals where they think everyone is like against them or yeah. hates them. And right. It's not the reality. In that way, it could be a bad way, a bad thing. Yeah. But I think in other ways, it may spark creativity. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So that makes me think of the song by Imagine Dragons. I know it's not Fun Dip. What is that song? Thunder. Okay. <laughs> I just hear Fun Dip whenever it plays. Um, so basically, it's talking about this person that everyone is telling them, no, you can't do it. You're a loser and mm -hmm. whatever. And they're like, well, you're wrong. I'll show you. And they make it. And the people that were putting them down are like, Paying for them and clapping for them and thinking they're great now. Right. So, yeah, that could be a positive spin on it. Absolutely. Travis, look deep in thought. <clears throat> With perception versus reality. Reality initially influence your perception. You perceive the reality around you. But if you can change your perception of that reality, an example of this is if you're always looking for the bad in a situation, you're going to find it. Yeah. And you're going to be like, oh, I got up this morning and uh, I was running late because my cat needed to. And then when I was driving to work and it started to rain and that first person that came in did. Okay. You're, you're, See, I'm going to laugh about all of that shit. Right, and that's the other side of it. You take that same perception. I slept in a little more than I should have, and it was good. Then my cat needed this extra attention, but they were happy about it. And I like rain. It calms and soothes me, and I was in the car, and I had my audiobook. Then the people came in, and this one person did this thing, and oh, you just wouldn't believe. And let's laugh about it. It's that's how your perception can change reality. And if you're looking for the good, that silver lining, those blessings, however you want to look at it, you're going to glean more of that out of life, pull more of that out of your daily existence. And that's going to create a lot of changes in you. Yes, Andrea? Well, okay. So that brings something to mind. There, there's someone that um, I know and one day they said it's not the situation it is how you react right and i don't know why i've heard that before but when they <clears> said that it clicked and I went, well shit, yeah so once i realized and i try to keep that in my mind when shit happens it's and i try to react better and right. then everything turns out better because that's how I perceive it. So. Mm -hmm. 
it's been pointed out that you can't control how you feel to a situation. You're going to have these knee-jerk reactions and feelings and emotions, but you can control how you react to how you feel. So you might be, ah, I'm hurt or offended or whatever. Now you get to choose what to do with that. You don't have to ruin your own day. You don't have to get angry or start yelling. Um, so yeah, that, that is up to you. And, and by the way, that takes practice. That's not like a magical switch you fucking flip on or off. Hell no, it's not. And this is where the action with the mental state goes hand in hand. And they support each other in either mm -hmm. direction, spiraling down or climbing up. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things, uh, I'm going to quote one of the books that I wrote, 27 Thoughts on Enjoying Life. It's just 27 simple things to do every day. And sometimes it has things like as simple as just get dressed. Take a shower and get dressed. And people are like, that doesn't really help. No, it might not. But trust me, not getting dressed and not taking a shower will make you feel that much worse. Whereas there right. is a chance that if you get up and take a shower, you're like, oh, I feel physically a little better. And because of that, I feel mentally a little better. It's climbing that slope one step at a time. Or sliding down. And that goes quicker I'm, than climbing. Hmm? I'm going to quote a line from Risky Business. Nice. Sometimes you just have to say, what the fuck? I saw that movie when I was very, very young. And that became my motto through life. Now, sometimes I say, what the fuck, louder than other times. But hey, <laughs> and, it helps to get me through. And sometimes instead of saying, what the fuck, he's like, what the fuck? So, mm -hmm. you know, the inflection can make a difference in how it's <laughs> perceived. Okay. Shall we, uh, we get some more on this or shall we give some closing thoughts on this? I think closing thoughts, a toast. We'll do the toast <laughs> right after the closing thoughts. Andrew, what's your closing thoughts on this topic? Don't keep wishing for something take action ed i think for, for a lot of people it's the devil i know versus the devil i don't know and uh it, it's safe there in the little whoopee with the devil you know but hey jump out of that whoopee try something new try something different move forward building on both those things <clears throat> any kind of forward motion whether it's Again, looking for that job, writing a book, creating something, gardening, learning a new recipe, whatever. It's going to make you feel good. It's going to make you feel accomplished. And that's a positive change. So you can't just think about it, think about it, think about it. You do have to put that plan physically into motion in your life in whatever aspect you're going to do. So right along with, don't move my mouse, kitty. Um... Right along with Andrea and Ed right there. Uh, you, you've, you've seen Nike's ad campaign, Just Do It. It's true. Yeah. Just that, do it. Take that first step and the second and the one after and so on. Okay, let's get a closing toast. Thank God I saw that toast-it note. Actually, I almost forget I went straight for the outro. Um, Andrea, you got something for us since it was your topic? I do not. Come on. Just do it. The pressure is overwhelming. She's thinking. She's thinking. She's stuck. It's like you have spider legs attached. Are you, your, your eyelashes are like... Okay. We're going to rely on Cogsley. Thank Ed, you. Ed, you got anything? Nothing. Okay. Butter, all that stuff. Here we go. Cogsley's quote is, you can't struggle against life. You can only go with it and hope to direct it. <laughs> kind of fitting. And that's from uh, a character named Jack Tucker from Journal of a Stranger, Volume 2, which is a book I wrote. There we go. 
Yeah. Okay, let's get that outro. Before we go, I want to remind everyone that you can email us at talktothetavernshow at gmail.com to let us know your thoughts on the show's topic, suggest another topic that you'd like to hear us discuss, or just have us read a message out on air to someone in your life. Thanks for supporting the show by downloading the podcast, sharing it on social media, grabbing some shirt stickers or mugs from bit.ly slash tavern merch, or barware patches and hats from bit.ly slash tavern merch too. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash tavern merch or tavern merch and the number two. Thanks to everyone who joined Joined us live at twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk and everyone who supports the tavern by subscribing, hosting, throwing bits, raids, and most of all, commenting. Thanks for joining us in the discussion shenanigans tonight. You are the one thing that makes the show what it is. Don't forget to join us at the tavern next week. Until then, have fun, keep learning, and be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day and steamy dreams every night. This holiday season, we all wish for hope and healing. Children and families who spend their holidays at the hospital deserve a reason to believe in first steps, in giggles, high fives, and hugs. For 150 years, Children's National Hospital has provided world-class care and groundbreaking research. Please donate today to help patients and healthcare heroes this holiday season. Visit childrensnational.org slash holiday. That's childrensnational.org slash holiday. While traveling, it's usually best to pack light. When it comes to money, carrying some cash and having an alternative like Zelle is a great idea. Zelle's an easy way to send and receive money with people you trust at any U.S. bank. It's already in thousands of different banking apps, and it's money straight into your bank account in minutes fast. Look for Zelle in your banking app today. Safe travels.